Okay, so for our qPCR, the first thing that we did was make our RNA that we isolated and then uh, made it into cDNA. So this, um, after two hours and 17 minutes, our cDNA is ready. I need to do a dilution step. So I have one nanogram per microliter. And for my actual qPCR, I use five nanograms of my cDNA total. Okay, so I have my tubes ready. The first ones are my concentrated cDNA that I just made from my RNA. And then these right here are going to be my diluted cDNA so I can take exactly the volume that I want at the concentration that I want. I have my primer, so we're multiplexing, so we have two different um, colors here. Um, and then my TAC mix. My Tacman Fast Advanced Mixer. And for my cal calculations, I show here what I did. So I had a total of 500 nanograms of my RNA that I made into cDNA. And um, we use a total volume of 50 microliters. So my final concentration of that is 10 nanograms per microliter. But for my actual qPCR, I want a final concentration of one nanogram per microliter. And I like having a good amount of volume in case I do multiple genes. Like in this case, I'm doing two genes. I'm doing COX-2 and um, VCAM1. So I make you know a good amount of volume under microliters divide by the original concentration. And so what I'm gonna do right now is dilute my cDNA to be at this concentration. So I need 10 microliters of my concentrated um, cDNA. And to that, we're gonna add 90 microliters of our um, RNA's free water. Okay, so we're using the um, ambient nucleus free water. You can, you know, use whichever company as long as it's nucleus free water so we're going to be using that to dilute my dna and then the primers that we're using is uh, vcam with the fluorescent fam um, so that's my first gene my other gene is cox2 um, with the fluorescent fam and my internal control we're actually going to use actin and then this is bound to the Vic fluorescent. So because we're multiplexing, so these are going to be combined at the same time when we do our qPCR. Um, and then once again, our master mix is this Tagman Fast Advance um, master mix. Come. Okay, so to make my um, RNA's nucleus free water. Um, I'm going to use the VWR multipipetter. So this is our 300 that has a range from 20 microliters to 300. Um, I was using this previously at 35, but we want to dispense 90 microliters. So I'm gonna go ahead, you move this uh, circular part and it is asking you click to change volume. So I click and now I go ahead and put the desired volume that I want. And so we want 90 microliters in this case, okay? And then it can do up to three, but I'm just going to do two. Um, and I'm using the 200 microliter tips. So make sure that it's well attached. And so once uh, you're ready, you aspirate some of that water and then these guys get some extra material oh wait okay purge let me do two because this right now just only did one so change change volume good two there we go okay so there we go that aspirated two loads of 90 microliters so dispense that extra and then you're ready for two dispenses. So one, two, and then see how um, there's always some extra volume. So get rid of this guy and it's asking, you know, it purges once it's ready, aspirate, get rid of that extra volume and then it's ready to dispense two of them. So one and two. And then once again, there's a little extra and the process repeats itself. 
Okay, so now that all my tubes have uh, the water, so that's 90 microliters, and see how they're all the same. And obviously, always label what you're doing, especially in this case where I have my concentrated cDNA. I also have eight of these with just RNA, and now we're diluting this seed this seed DNA. So it's important that you label and what you have and put in, you know. Uh, the volume, your concentration, your samples. I work with multiple cell types, so these are mouse, retinal, microendothelial cells, so make sure that you write that down in the date. Um, and so I am diluting 10 microliters of my concentrated cDNA, and so I have my pipette ready for 10 microliters. Um, and once again, uh, some of these pipetters are really nice because they tell you up to what range they can go. So two microliters to 20, it won't go below or above. So set. And so I go to my first um, sample and I'm just going to take 10 microliters and then dilute that. Okay, so done with that. Take another 10 microliters and always pipette them up and down just a little bit to mix that cDNA. Once again, always make sure that there's no bubbles and that you have your volume and then mix. And then we'll go ahead and finish for the rest and then we'll get our QPCR plate ready to go. So before I continue showing you um, the loading of the QPCR plates, let me briefly go over what we're doing. So um, depending on the system that you're using, you have to adapt your protocol toward, you know, based on that system. We are doing for QPCR, we're using the TACMAN um, component. Prior, I used to use the um, CyberGreen. So once again, follow the company's um, protocol. This is our protocol. And so for this system, the nice thing is that you can do a single plex, meaning that you can just um, use one primer or you can do, which is what I'm doing, a duplex or multiplex. So the nice thing about this machine is that you can use different dyes. Um, so Vic, Fam, Abby, and June are four of the different dyes that you can use. For my experiments, um, I'm going to be using only two, Vic and Fam. So for the Tacman Master Mix, which I showed you a couple minutes earlier, we're going to use a total of 10 microliters per reaction. And then our primers come at a 20x concentration, so we only need one microliter of each. And so then for my cDNA template, I told you that I'm actually using five microliters because I wanna use a total of five um, nanograms and I diluted my cDNA to a concentration of, or final concentration of one nanogram per microliter. And then the last part is um, to add the nuclease-free water in order to make a total of 20 microliters per reaction. So this is the master protocol. One thing that I do before um, I proceed is that I make a little design of how I'm going to load my 96 well plate. So you can see here I have 1 through 12 because there's 12 um, little wells, 8 through, you know, there's 8 um, different um, rows and so I add uh, my sample in triplicates so for my four controls each control is going to be loaded um, in triplicates so here we have uh, my controls and then in um, row B we have my TNF stimulated cells and so once I calculate like how many of these I'm going to use so this is about 24 this is 24 wells and I always like um, adding an extra so I make my calculations for 25 wells once I do that I come here so my Tacman uh, mixture 10 microliters my primer Vic is for my actin um, 
one microliter and for my primer um, tag with the FAM dye, I'm using the VCAM um, and then my water, which is going to be three microliters and eventually my cDNA, which is five microliters. And so I'm doing 25 um, reactions. So what I do is that I multiply 25 reactions times the volume. So that gives me a total volume that I will eventually make into these tubes. <clears throat> Um, and yes, the DNA, I act, the cDNA, I actually add directly into the plates. I'll show you that in a bit, simply because, you know, I'm using um, eight different um, cDNA samples. So I make this big master mix, which I will then aliquot um, to the individual wells and the individual's cDNA. So the plates that I'll be using, the 96 wool plates, are from Apply Biosystems. Um, these are the ones that I'm going to be using for my QPCR, and I already have my plate here um, set up in the eyes. I like these because um, the, you can actually see the labels. There are different plates by different companies, but I like these because you can actually see the labeling 1 through 12 and A through H. And so these are the little wells that we're going to be loading with our um, diluted cDNA and our primers that will be put into a combination. So I'll be showing you that next. Our actual qPCR will be performed in the Quantum um, Studio 3. So right here where you have the setup, um, there is this button here. If you press that, the door opens and then you can actually put your plate here. So this is an old plate that I that I did. And to close it, you just once again go up here, close. And to do the analysis, we go ahead and open the quantum studium design and analysis right there. And you will get this. So once it opens, um, it gives you the option to select either a new experiment or open an existing. We are actually going to do a new experiment, so just click on new experiment. And then for my experiment, obviously, you know, put your name of your experiment, uh, and then we're using the 96 uh, well, and we actually want the comparative um, CT, uh, Tachman reagents, and instead of standard, we're actually doing a fast run, just kind of nice because your QPCR will be completed in under 30 minutes. And so once you have this, so this is the setup of your plate, you can go here into methods. So this is our method. Um, each well has a total volume of 20 microliters um, and it tells you, um, you know, in step one, the temperature where it goes to step, you know, two step ones and then step two and then how many times this is repeated 40 times. So this is our method that's going to be repeated several times. And then here um, is where you will do the setup of your plate. Um, so in this case, because we're multiplexing, we should go into where it says assign targets and samples. We are going to do advanced setup. And the reason why we do that is so it gives us an option to put different targets. So remember that I have two genes plus the actin, which is our internal control. So we're going to add and add. Okay, so here I'm going to show you um, how to set it up. So what I did was add my three targets. So my first one is going to be, um, and then you can assign these the, in the order that you really want to. So for this one, I'm going to put um, VCAM one, and that is uh, tagged with FAM reporter. For my second target, I'm actually using um, Cox two. That's also a FAM reporter. And for my third target, this is where I'm using actin. And this one is actually bound to VIC. 
So note how you can click here on reporter and it gives you the list of the different dyes that the um, Plunk Studio 3 machine can read. And so we're gonna go down here to Vic. So once again, this really depends on the primers that you are buying from the company. So yes. And then for my samples, this is where I'm going to load uh, my different samples. So I have a total of eight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add them because they do repeat. Um, I'm basically loading the same thing but with different jeans. So um, I'll just show you the first one um, and then I'll finish the rest and I'll continue showing you how to do this. So in this case, this is my first one. I always like writing down the type of cell that I'm using and in this case, this is my control which I write as um, CNT. And so I'll finish this and then see you in a minute. Thank you ladies for helping. Man, I should charge. I do, but they go. Okay, so now that I have the list of my samples and also my targets, then you come here um, where, you know, this basically represents your 96 um, plate. Um, and so the first thing that I'm going to do is um, go ahead and click or select my three first wells, which are going to be for my control and then four, five, and six, it's my follow-up control. And so, you know, in my case, I'm gonna continue doing this for the rest of my samples, and I'm going to do this twice because I'm actually running two different genes. Um, so my four controls, and then here comes my experimentals. So just gonna go ahead and finish this. And then I'll show you how to then include. So once you highlight the wells, then you click on your sample. And then as soon as you finish doing that, you'll see that your samples are labeled. So once again, you highlight on the wells that you wanna label. You come back to where your targets are. So this last three are the my last one, number eight. You click on it, and then you should be able to see it here. Um, so to focus, there we go. Okay, now that I have this, I'm going to, so all of these are going to have the um, VCAM and Actin primer. So what I'm gonna do is highlight them all. And then once you highlighted your samples, you go to your um, targets. And here we have, see where your targets are. Here I have the VCAM primer and also the Actin, which is our internal control. You click on them and then when you look at your plate, you'll see that it has both of that. So I'm gonna repeat this um, off camera for my second set and then show you the final results. Okay, so welcome back. I finally finished setting up my um, plate on the program. So you can see here, I have my first set with my Actin and my VCAM primers, and then the second set with Actin and COX-2. And now I'm going to go um, set up my actual plate so I can load it um, onto the machine. So once again, just to uh, recap for properties, um, label your experiment. Um, uh, the instrument type that I'm using here is the Quantum Studio 3 system. I'm using the 96 well um, plate. I actually want from this list my comparative CT, but then once again, that really does depend on what you're doing in your lab. Um, and I'm using the Tacman reagents. You could use Cyber 3 with this machine, but we are using these guys. And for my run mode, we want to do the fast one. Um, I'm using the fast one, not the standard. But once again, that really does depend on you and what you want to run. Once again, the method is in the method tab and you can check, you know, volume of each well, um, the cover temperature, and then the steps one, one, and two, and then how many times um, this reaction is going to occur, 40 times. Um, 
and then you go up here to do your plate setup remember because we are multiplexing or duplexing i clicked on the advanced setup if you're only doing one you can do the quick setup um, so here's an example but i'll just go back here um, so your targets these are your primers and your samples um, and then once I'm ready, I'm gonna, when it's running, you can see the run um, in this amplification plot. So I'm gonna go load the qPCR plate and then go ahead and start my run. Okay, so we're back. Uh, we're coming back to this part. I'm going to start prepping up my Tacman mixer my primers and my water and what i do is that i have my um, micro centrifuge tubes already labeled so this is going to be the first one and so for this one what i'm going to do first is add my um, water which is 75 um, microliters so i'm, I'm going to go ahead and prepare my pipette so it can dispense 75 microliters of my water okay and half my water uh, ready I'll put it here on the ice and since both of these are basically the same when it comes to water and Tamek mixer I'll add those first um, and then I'll add the primers so I'll have them ready I like using these guys because they have a filter so then always double check your pipette 75 microliters and so adding it to my micro centrifuge tubes okay now that I'm done with this I'm going to go ahead and prepare my um, pipette to dispense 250 microliters of my Tacman mixer. So this right here is at 500 and we want 250. Okay. My tips. And we are using, once again, um, this is what we're using here from Applied Bio Systems, Techman Fast Advanced Master Mix, and that's the reference number if you need to order it, okay? Or the catalog number. Okay, so 250, make sure you have no bubbles. Okay, and now we can go ahead and mix them. And now I'm going to go ahead and start adding my um, primers. So for this one, make sure you're careful and you don't mix the wrong things. And so I'm gonna prepare my pipetter to dispense 25 of my um, primers. So the first one that I'm going to do is a uh, VCAM. So this is, and this is for mouse. So just up and down. Okay. So seal this, and then my next one is my actin, which is this one right here. This is the one with Vic. So just to make sure, because these are in the minus 20, just flicker them. I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay. Once again, 25 microliters. And then mix it into my tube. And that's it. I'll go ahead and prepare uh, the tube for the next one. And then I'll start loading. Okay. 
So I loaded pretty much all my samples. I have the last one to show you. Once again, I'm using the VVR uh, multi repeat pipetter. So I have my five microliters and repeat three because it's three of these per um, sample. So, you know, mix your samples a little bit. It grabs some of that cDNA, dispense the extra, and now it's ready to dispense um, your three five microliter aliquots. So one, two, three. And I'm gonna do this one more time because um, I have another set to do. So once again, you get some of your cDNA, dispense the extra, and now I can go ahead and do my last three. And so once you're done, one of the things that I do is that I check that my samples are all at the bottom. If they are on the uh, side of the tube, what I do is that I like grabbing it and tapping it gently to help the samples come down. And now let's check them. And so I think you can see there the five microliters of your sample since I'm only using these four. Um, you can also check like this. Once we add, so I just added the C, uh, my cDNA. Now I'm going to add the um, TAC Max Mixture Mix with my primers and water in order to make a final volume of 20 microliters and we're gonna spin them down before running our plate. So I'll put them here. I'm gonna get, um, I have already my mixtures. Um, and then I know that of these, I have to dispense um, 18 micro, uh, 15 microliters plus five of my cDNA makes a total um, volume of 20. So what I'm gonna do now is prepare my um, pipette so I can dispense 15 microliters. Okay, and six. Okay, now that I'm ready, I'll just show you a run or two. Let's use these guys. Okay. So for uh, my rows A and B, I'm using the VCAM. Uh, note that for me, I make a little marker so they can direct me. That is optional. I like doing them because it tells me where you know I'm loading. Um, so I divided them this way so I know that my first gene set goes here or primer set and then my second set of primers goes on C and D. So for VCAM, these already I have mixed them and spun them down. I'm gonna go ahead and load my 15 microliters. Once again, I double check that I'm loading the correct thing. Mix it just a little bit. Aspirate, rid get rid of that extra. And then load my six wells. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then my last row, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now seven. I'm just making sure that there's no bubbles. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And note that um, I didn't change tips because I'm basically loading the same combination in all these uh, uh, wells. But now that I'm gonna move to my second set of primers, then you want different tips. You don't wanna mix them. But if you tend to be overly careful, you can go ahead and change tips um, for each you know, sample, that's okay. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna get my plate, tap it gently. And I sort of like tapping it diagonally. That's up to you how you wanna do it. 
you just want to be gentle because you don't want to uh, do it so hard where it's going to splash up and then you can quickly like check so i think you can see here this is now my samples with the 20 microliters uh, for my qpcr reaction and then here we just have these two with the five microliters okay so i'm just going to finish loading my plate and then i'll show you um, putting the plate in the uh, machine so now that I loaded all my samples and my cDNA, we're going to cover the PCR plate with these Apply Biosystem Optical Adhesive Covers. Um, so they come like this and it's technically a sticker and so you just lay them on top of the plate. And this is to prevent your samples from um, evaporating and so um, the system brings this sort of flat palette that you can just use to seal your plate. Um, I like sealing it well at the edges because I want to make sure that my samples don't dry. Okay. And just and then I use the edge to remove this tape, this extra excess. Okay, so just one more time. And so as I was uh, mentioning before we actually set our samples, we're gonna go ahead and spin them down. So one of the ways how um, I like mixing this is via the tickle method where you just tickle uh the tubes another way that you can do it is using a vortexer but you have to make sure that it's very light i normally don't like using it so i just do the tickle method and it works well for me but if you wanted to you know you can just use this light little way of doing it um but once again i just like doing the tickle method um and so once this is done we're going to spin them down so we have here our um, centrifuge and we have our balance, right? So we put them in these holder, 96 well holders. And it's important that your centrifuge is balanced. So get this one, put my sample here, and then it shouldn't need to spin more than five minutes. So that's what we, we do. Okay, once it's done, I'm gonna go ahead and um, put them in the machine. Okay, so our samples are done spinning. And you can always quickly check that the volumes are symmetrical and they look perfect. So now I'm gonna come here, open up my machine by pressing that button you can also do it through the uh, computer remove this old plate put my new plate here to see how it fits well into this 96 has 96 um, little holes to put your plate once it's there close it and so once we have that since i already showed you guys um setting up my plate so this is all ready to go um, so when we come here to run uh, I go ahead and see where it says start run so you click on start run and it's going to generate a number so it's thinking let's give it a second and so click on that number in order to actually start the run. So now it's going to tell you to save it. I'm going to go ahead and set up the date, um, my information, my initials. So this is uh, what I'm doing. And then, you know, save it in whatever is it, you know, your folder. I have my own little folder here. Okay. And I'm going to make a new folder with today's date. Okay. Save it. Okay. 
and so see where it says starting the instrument run so it tells you that it's running and then when it's done you'll know and then you can just save uh, your data and analyze your QPCR that's it okay so my QPCR run has been completed so you can now see here the amplification plot a nice um, thing that the system has is that you can come here and then go down to gene expression and it will calculate for you um, gene expression so here I have my COX-2 gene and my VCAM so these are my controls they're pretty much the same and then the cells that were stimulated with TNF at different concentrations you can see um, an increase in um, VCAM so I'll go ahead transfer this information analyze it and plot it okay so to export just go up here where it says export and so it'll give you the option uh, you know your file name and it will export it into Excel so once you know go ahead and click on the contents that you want and so once you have done that just click export and it will go ahead and do that and then your um, data will be exported into Excel and you can take that and analyze it. Before exporting, make sure that you go into Browse and you find the folder that you have designated. So this is my folder and open and save so you can get your data exported once that's ready go ahead and export okay and you can double check your folder making sure that you have your Excel exported another thing you can do once you export your data uh, via Excel is that if you want a PowerPoint of this you can go to file and then under file click where it says send to PowerPoint and the nice thing is that you know it'll put this data um, in PowerPoint format so apply and then once again save it in your folder of interest and then save and we can go in here and then you have your PowerPoint presentation right there.